Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to be talking about, is it really worth going after long tail keywords? So Neil, what are long tail keywords and why should you be going after them? Sure. Long tail keywords are a few words. So it's like, it's not going to be two word phrases. It's usually three, four, five word phrases that people are searching for. A good example of this, I used to get a ton of traffic for how to gain more Instagram followers. That's a long tail phrase. Funny enough, that term alone would drive me around 30,000 unique visitors a month. So if you want to jack it, go ahead, jack it. Didn't convert well, mostly mobile traffic, but you can go after it. So that's an example of a long tail term. A uh, head term is more like uh, credit cards or Instagram, right? And what you'll notice is head terms get more traffic, but when you look at your overall blog traffic or website traffic, because there's so many more long tail phrases on your website naturally, even though each one doesn't get more traffic than the head terms, when you add up all the long tail terms, it'll generate 80 plus percent of your traffic. I think a good example of this that I, I've talked about in the past is when you look at Wikipedia, for example, and you look at uh, Abraham Lincoln. So the very first time they, they put that post out there, uh, maybe it was about 2,700 words, right? And then a couple of years later, you know, people kept updating it and it became about 8,000 words. And I think in present day, it's about 15,000 words. And you know, Google does like it when you're refreshing content. You know, freshness does help when you're refreshing stuff. So, um, well, obviously. But when you look at that post itself, when you're adding more and more content to it, Google's able to see that content and you're gonna be able to, let's say a lot of links are going to it already, you're gonna get credit for that long tail, uh, long tail content that you have, right? It's not just, for example, red shoes, for example. Um, if you're talking about you know sports red shoes or if you talk about luxury red shoes, it's all in that super epic post about red shoes. Well, it's, it, it's going to be beneficial to you because first of all, you have the authority on that one page and you have the, the, the content that's backing it up. Yeah, and Eric, do you actually want to go into what Brian Dean thinks about long tail phrases? So I can talk about the one study that he did on the 1 million search results and you know what he showed, and this is done by SERP IQ too, they both concluded that the first three results have give or take anywhere from 2,000 to 2,500 words. So these are results or blog posts that have a lot of content uh, on them. You know, the the way that eHow used to do their content or demand media, um, they used to write, you know, three to 500 word articles. They used to pay penny on the dollars, you know, people from India and the Philippines, and they did really well, right? If you literally Google uh, demand media stock right now, if you look at it, you're going to see that there's a big pop in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, the Google Panda update happens, which is the, the quality update. And you can see their stock craters, right? It's crazy how much Google can affect a public company. Um, but just look at that. You don't want that to happen to your company. Ideally, you're writing in-depth content, but not just fluff. It actually has to be good stuff. Yeah. And with long tail phrases, it's really worth it when you look at total traffic it drives to your business. But when it comes to targeting, everyone's like, all right, which long tail phrases should I target? When you naturally write content on your site, especially blog posts that are 2000 plus words, you include long tail phrases without even thinking about it. So don't worry about, okay, let me do keyword research and target these specific long tail phrases. Just heck, go out there and write on a topic that you're trying to help people with, educate with, and naturally you'll end up writing information with words and phrases that'll benefit people. So that way when they search, Google will naturally rank you for those phrases and keywords. So what I would recommend is, yeah, definitely agree with Neil. Don't think about the long tail content. You know, it's just like people saying they get writer's block. Um, you don't really get writer's block. You think about, you know, as a human being, you talk every single day, you don't get talker's block, right? So just go out there, write, write like you mean it. Um, and then you, you can go into your analytics later. You can go, go into your Google search console later. And then you're going to find these gems. Um, you can even use Ahrefs too to see the long tail traffic that's coming to your site. And you can find out what converts well, right? A lot of times the, the long tail traffic is often the content that, that or the keywords that convert the best. Um, again, but you don't have to stress over keyword research and things like that. Totally agree. Once your content gets older, you'll notice that, or even your web pages, that more of them will start ranking for long tail phrases. So go into your Google search console. And when you go to the search traffic, I believe it's search traffic. I'm actually pulling it up right now. Let me go to the Google search console. Um, okay, so 
once you load up a website in Google Search Console, click on search traffic, which is the navigation option, then click on search analytics. And once you do that, it'll show clicks, impressions, CTR positions, uh, queries, pages, countries, etc. Select the pages tick box. That'll show you the pages that get the most traffic. Also select impressions. It usually uh, by default just has clicks checked. So do clicks and impressions. And uh, I usually like sorting by either clicks or impressions. Click on the page URL because now it's sorting by pages. And within there, once you click on that, then also tick mark the queries button, right? So once a specific page loads, then click the queries button and it'll show all the keywords that you're getting clicks and impressions for on that page. Now you know what long tail phrases that you're getting traffic for. Go into that web page and see if you mention those keywords together. If you don't, consider revising the content and try to blend in those keywords, assuming it's natural and it still flows. If you do that, over time you'll notice that your long tail traffic will go up even higher and your rankings will also go up. The one thing I will add on our end is, you know, this, this relates to long tail content in general, long tail keywords, because it is related to content. We've been continually updating the posts that have done well for us. Um, and you know, recently we, we saw a post that kind of died down. So we decided to die down in terms of traffic from analytics and we decided to just update it. And literally we just updated it by, um, you know, redoing it, uh, you know, taking out the things that are, are no longer relevant and just adding more content to it in general. And all of a sudden it's getting, you know, it was originally getting maybe five or 500 uh, visits a month or so. Now it's getting about 3,000 visits or so. So that does help. You know, you talk about, um, you know, this is re in, in relation to the long tail keywords. So just think about that. You know, it might be worth adding a upgrading workflow to, um, to what you do in terms of content marketing. So with that being said, let us know what you think. We'll see you in tomorrow's episode of Marketing School. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.